Good morning, fam. It's Erica with Not Your Average EDC. What? Not the essentials anymore? We're back to Not Your Average EDC? Yes, we are. God, I could not do that other freaking name. I could not do any of the other names. I tried. They just did they didn't feel right. They didn't feel right at all. So we're back to our old school roots of Not Your Average EDC. I um I had an identity crisis for a while. And nothing, nothing felt fitting, man. Nothing. So we're back to Not Your Average EDC, and in celebration of fighting insanity, <laughs> we are going to do a collection update today of my knives. I, I need some sun, dude. Oh my goodness. I look like a vampire. This is terrifying. Ugh. We, we need sunshine. We need sunshine and less cold, I guess. But, guys, today we're going to do something really fun. We're going to do a collection update. I sold off a lot of knives, but then we got some in as Christmas presents, and I found some lying around, so we're going to do an update here. Not really going to go into any detail about them. We're just looking at them because we all love knives. So I have a huge pile here, and we're just going to look at them and talk about them a little bit and celebrate having not your average EDC back. I was really excited when I went to change my name back and nobody had taken it on YouTube. I was like, yes, we're still not your average EDC. Okay, so these are in no particular order. I have a small pile next to me here of knives that I need to sharpen. So I'm gonna do all of those ones first so they don't get mixed up with the ones that have good edges. So first up, looks like we have the mini snake eater from Wood Steel Knives. This is a beautiful little knife. I have videos on, I believe, everything you will see in this video. So just go look on my reviews playlist or use your shit playlist, whatever, to find more info on these. But yeah, this is the Mini Snake Eater from Woody Smith over at Wood Steel Knives. This is a knife designed by James Harris over at Junkyard Fox. His channel is the best channel on YouTube, hands down. This is a really nice little skinning bushcraft knife obviously has been used and tested absolutely gorgeous a mini version of james's completely original design really good knife next we have the bgm knives spade the full size this is in 52 100 steel this is john's uh, version of the perfect EDC knife for him. So this is completely his own design, and uh, he basically made this to be a one-and-done knife for himself. He has kind of done slight upgrades throughout the years. This is the Generation 3, I believe. Really, really nice knife. BGM knives. Also, I forgot to mention the Snake Eater, the Mini Snake Eater, I should say, is in 01 Tool Steel. Stamped right there. Most of them are made in AEBL, but you can opt for 01 Tool Steel if you wish. A knife that I put up for sale during my collection sale, but then it, it, I just I pulled it immediately because I didn't think it was fair to actually sell to someone is the Hogue Deca in Magna Cut. This is from when they were running the Magna Cut very soft. I have had my issues with this knife. I put it up for sale for $50 with the disclaimer that this was from the first run and that it was soft and then I just immediately pulled it from the sale because I just didn't think that it was fair. Even at only $50 um, and giving a disclaimer, I just, I don't know, I just felt it just wasn't, it wasn't fair to sell. So it's, it's in the collection as a complete beater, as you can see. I may at some point put it back into the rotation but right now it literally just sits in the box and i don't really use it because it's not worth my time it's kind of a piece of garbage this is the one that jared over at neve's knives did take and use he didn't think it was as bad as i'm saying uh i think it's complete garbage next we have the spider co Native 5 Lightweight in LC 200N Steel. This is a knife that I have thoroughly tested. It's one of my favorite knives and favorite steels. The only reason I don't put it into the rotation much is because I kind of keep it aside as a knife that I would put into my pocket, particularly to go to the beach during the summer 
or if I know I'm going to be working in the rain or something, um, I kind of just, this is like a save it for a rainy day, literally, type of knife, because LC200N is completely stainless. Thoroughly tested, absolutely fantastic knife. Tons of videos on this on the channel. Highly recommend it. But yeah, it's just, um, this is one that I really just try to keep sharp and keep for if I'm going to a salty or wet environment. Along with the Native 5 Lightweight series is my actual Native 5 Lightweight that I actually do use. This one is completely modded. We have videos about this, but this is in CPM Rex 45, completely modified by my friend Anthony. And uh, another friend, Ben, contributed to this. This is just a completely decked out Native 5 Lightweight with dyed scales, regrind, really thin behind the edge, forced hot vinegar patina, just a really cool user. Absolutely love using this knife. Then we have the trusty old, ooh, she needs to be cleaned and oiled. <laughs> trusty old pair of three in, come on. Okay, it's not gonna focus. In S45VN. Why aren't you focusing? Thank you. CPM S45VN blacked out coated blade g10 scales i do have a blacksmith finish lynch northwest clip on there specifically made for this model you can see how they kind of cut out the lanyard hole there this is uh one of my beaters 100 percent. this one just gets beat to literal shit love it though always follows through for me i love this knife Highly, highly recommend. Tons of videos on the Para 3 model on my channel. I started out hating it. Now I love it. Can't live without it. Mm -hmm. mm. Fabulous. Speaking of knives that we cannot live without. This is my life source. This is my blood. I just spit. <laughs> this is my, my goo goo baby. The Emerson Mini A100. This is in 154 cm blade steel chisel ground. Uh, a while ago, I did acid stone wash the blade, so it's a little darker than like a normal one. But as you can see, if the camera will focus, used, abused in the best way, loved to death. A knife that I will never stop recommending. I have beaten the pulp out of this thing, and it just keeps going. Look how smooth that is. Emerson's are so gritty, and you can't even open them. We'll leave it at that. Okay, uh, we do have the GEC Bullnose up next. A Sodbuster-type knife from Great Eastern Cutlery. This one's in 1095, I'm pretty sure, or 1075. No, 1095, right? Somebody let me know. Uh, a beautiful old school traditional knife that I have clearly used a lot. Really gorgeous. Green micarta scales, brass pins. It's just a cool little old school knife. I threw a little Ultim bead on there because you guys know I love those piss beads as people call them. Love it. Just a nice little old school knife. Really snappy. Beautiful walk and talk. Oh my god. My hands are so cold that I can't even hold my knives. <laughs> Love this one though. Okay, uh, fixed blades. Let's do the fixed blade part of the collection and then we'll go to the folders. So here we have a knife that not a lot of people know about or see out in the wild. This is the Mitch Mitchell Native Survival Knife made by LT Wright Knives. You can see their little house stamp right there. This is a really cool knife. There's the Native Survival Stamp. So Mitch Mitchell was on the Alone series. He either won or made it to like the top three he loves Mora's. Um, after the show, he worked with 
LT Wright to make, like, his perfect bushcraft knife, essentially. So this is his version of the ideal knife, and it's very Puko-esque, Mora-esque, um, Scandi grind. This one, I think, is an 01 tool steel, 90 degree spine, really large handle here. So this is natural micarta with some nice pins, and... You can kind of tell that the handle is, like, huge, and you have a little bit of this, like, sweep to the design. Very ergonomic, obviously made for someone with way bigger hands than me. A dude. Because, uh, as you can see, I have a lot of length there. But, uh, Mitch was kind enough to get one of these to me. I emailed him, and I, you know, was trying to figure out how to get one because I just thought that he was the coolest dude on the earth, and, uh... I really wanted to try his design out, and he, uh, managed to get one to my house. I even gave him the wrong address on accident, and he ended up, like, fixing everything for me, sending one along. So, Mitch, if you ever see this, thank you, man. You are super cool. He's from Massachusetts, the next state over from me, so that was another, like, just cool little, um, addition to me wanting this knife was that he was, like, right next door to me. Or he grew up right next door to me in the state over. So, really beautiful knife. Super useful. I do have videos using this knife and talking about it. It's just not one that's on anybody's radar, really, because no one really knows about it. But a very cool outdoors knife. Really comfortable. Really useful. Just a beautiful addition to the collection. And it does have green liners really nice. Okay, next we have the Bark River North Country EDC in CPM 154, not to be mistaken with 154 CM, very different. This one's so scratched up, I don't I don't think you can even really see the stamp, but it is there, CPM 154 convex ground from Bark River, absolutely gorgeous. Really nice large sized EDC sheath knife. I love this thing. Beautiful micarta scales. Just a really nice EDC knife to wear on your belt. I love the way that they did this sheath. You have multiple carry configurations that you can do. I just, I love this knife so much. I think it's a really good all around EDC knife, especially if you do game processing. That belly is really nice for that. If skinning game is part of your EDC. <laughs> a lot of people come on the channel and they're like, Nobody does that! Motherfucker, I do. Go watch my channel. Surprisingly, processing game is something I do quite often because my dogs eat a raw food diet and they also kill a lot of the things that they eat. Rabbits. Many videos on that on the channel. <laughs> but yeah, no, so, uh, for real, like, processing game or food is like an everyday thing for some people. Surprisingly, if you live out in the woods. In the boondocks. All right. Enough silliness. This is the Vault 4 from LT Wright Knives in A2 Tool Steel with red micarta scales. Absolutely stunning knife. Their Vault series, uh, th those are knives that they kind of like make and then they never really make again. This is one that I brought to Acadia National Park with me and did um, like an almost week long stay. And this did everything, batoning, food processing, whittling, all of the camp tasks. This thing is beat to absolute shit from that trip. And then obviously I've used it more outside of that. But that um, Acadia National Park trip really put a number on this one. But I will say... This steel performed the entire trip and did not need to be touched up. It's just kind of like bomb proof. And it keeps a toothy freaking edge. Really, really nice bushcraft all around knife. I love this. Like this design is perfect in my opinion. If you're looking for like a bushcraft knife that can also kind of be an EDC knife. They do make models that look very similar to this. Like, like I said, the vault... The Vault series, you can't really get again once they make them and sell them out. But they, they make knives very much like this that you can still purchase through their site. Okay, what do we got? Um, The Devil's Spawn is up next. 
my obsession of mini spades from John over at BGM Knives. Uh, the obsession is alive and well, as you will see. So, we have a Gen 3 full flat ground mini spade in Magna Cut. This is his higher treated Magna Cut. 62.5 to 63.5, I believe, something like that. He's treating it very well now. It takes a killer edge and keeps it for eternity. When you get it thin ground like this, especially, this is just one of the best EDC knives of all time. This is a little ripper of a knife. Oh my gosh. It's just so crispy. Have videos on that, of course. Um, really nice little dude. Along with the mini spade, Gen 3, we do also have a crew wear one that is hollow ground. Double hollow ground, actually. So this is in CPM crew wear. Big, deep, double, double hollow ground right there. Double hollow grind, I should say, right there. With a force patina. Really nice. I love crew wear. I think it's one of the best EDC steels. The, the edge that it takes is scary, and then how long it holds it is even more terrifying. I love crew wear. This is a really nice little knife. Really, really comfortable. The edge retention is just insane on these things. And then we do have one final <laughs> small little mini spade here. This is a Gen 2 that I've had for quite some time. So this is an old school one that's a little different from the new one. Gen 2 in 80 CRV2 steel. So the, the handle is just a little different. The blade is just a little different, but this is the Gen 2. Really gorgeous knife. Has a patina, a little bit of rust. Absolutely love it. The 80 CRV2 is um, a really good, like, beater steel. I have found that it takes a good edge and it just will kind of hold it forever um, if you don't need a ton of tooth and grit. Like, if you just need toughness, really. It's... It does not have corrosion resistance at all. It's a tool steel, so you gotta be careful of that. But if you just need a good beater knife that you may be hitting, like, nails or, or staples with or something, I, I do like ADC RV2 for that. Just a really good one. If you're going to use it as a shovel, you never know. Okay. Still on the John train here of BGM Knives, I do have a mini Kephart. This is in Nitro V. Another steel that I really enjoy that I think is underrated. Got some great natural micarta scales here. Really cool little design. Um... May or may not be beat to actual shit. I think you can see that giant roll here, right there. Okay, so this should be in my uh, pile to work on, I think. <laughs> that is a giant roll. That is a giant roll from using it as a shovel. It is scratched to shit. I was digging holes in the garden with this, and I just remembered that I never touched it up after that last time. I am sorry if you don't like that. Not sorry! Use your motherfucking shit! Yeah, this one has to be worked on, so I'm putting it in the pile over there. Okay, um, next we have the Adventure Sworn Mountaineer in 3V. A custom, beautiful bushcraft knife. Super old school configuration with the Coke bottle handle. I opted for the curly birch and blue and red liners on mine. I have had this for years and years. This is a staple of bushcraft. An absolute beauty. Focus. This one could use some cleaning, I think. <laughs> Still razor sharp after using it, though. Um, love that one. This is one of Joe Robinette's favorite models. He has used that a lot on his channel. 
Uh, let's do the LT Wright Frontier Valley, a more recent acquisition. However, I instantly fell in love with it. A two tool steel? Natural micarta handles. Uh, obviously have used this one quite a bit. Just a ripper of a little knife. One of my favorites already. Uh, has not been fully tested, but I have been using it a lot. I just haven't done the month of consecutive testing. Sorry, there's steak grease and fat stuck in this little grind right here that I'm actually trying to get out real quick with my fingernail. Because the last time I used it, I was cutting steak that had been cooked in bacon grease. Mmm. <laughs> okay, uh, the Tradesman from Kyle Noseworthy is the last fixed blade that we're going to be looking at here. Very recent gift to me for Christmas from my best friend in the entire world, Jeremy over at Bumblebee EDC. The best human that has ever been created, aside from Nicole Dodge, like they are very even literally godsends in my life would not be here without those people those two people so jeremy sent this over he bought it for me for christmas this is kyle's take on basically a fixed blade 940 he calls it the tradesman because um a tradesman contacted him asking if he could make the perfect all-around EDC knife for a construction worker, tradesman, blue-collar worker, whatever you want to call it. So this is Kyle's take on the infamous Benchmade 940, which I can just bring in real quick. Beep, beep. Come on, focus. Hopefully you can see the similarities. Yeah, so... um Kyle is in Canada. He is a knife maker. He does fabulous work. I have a full first impressions video on this knife on the channel. This one's an 01 tool steel. Extremely sharp. Scary sharp. He does all of the edges and everything freehand, which is really cool. I use this a lot the past few days. Like, so much. Love, love, love that one. What do I have on me today? Oh. Today, we're carrying the Chris Reeve Small Inkosi in CPM S45 VN Blade Steel. This one was a Knife Center exclusive in black gun coat. I have had a long road with this one. I have some videos of me beating the absolute shit out of this on the channel on the Use Your Shit playlist. Double lug really nice little tiny tiny edc knife definitely pretty beat up it could use a cleaning the edge is or the coating i should say is really beat up but a, a nice little tiny goo goo baby folder that one i'm gonna be making more content on i really am just gonna beat the shit out of it um okay so benchmade 940 in s30v a tried and true a classic a knife that i will never get rid of ever this thing has seen some shit okay this this one could use a little work too <laughs> Uh, I have to reevaluate what needs to be worked on here, I think. But yeah, um, this is just one of my favorites. Absolutely an essential for me. This is right up there with the Mini A100. I am just in love with this 940. I adore it. I recommend this to anyone trying to get into EDC and looking for a one-and-done knife. Another one of Benchmade's most iconic and recent upbringings. Beep beep. The bug out. I have had so many bug outs. It's disturbing and I cannot stop with them. They're just freaking fantastic. I love the Benchmade bug out. I think that the the 940 and the bug out 
are Benchmade's best work. And a lot of people are going to disagree with me and tell me that I'm crazy. Um, honestly, we could throw in the Griptilian series with that as well. Like, these three are Benchmade's best work, in my opinion, from my testing and years of use. Absolutely love them. The bug out is just incredible. If you don't like the plastic scales, there are tons of options for aftermarket scales that you can look into. I always opt for Applied Weapons Tech. They make really great scales. I have a full review on their scales on the channel. But the Benchmade Mini Griptilian in S30V is also a staple. I have been using Mini Grips for years and years and years. And they just are absolutely incredible. Um, if you haven't noticed, Benchmade's S30V is one of my favorite steels. We've got the 940 in S30V. We have the Bug Out in S30V. I really like Benchmade's S30V. Nicole has done extensive testing with the Benchmade S30V, and it actually holds an edge better for her in her blue-collar job where she beats the shit out of everything. Um, it holds an edge better than all of the other steels that she has tested, including Spyderco M4, Quiet Carry, um, Vanex, uh, Giant Mouse L Max. She just has found that S30V holds the best edge, which is pretty crazy. But she really beats on her knives and puts them through the ringer, and uh, this particular Benchmade held an edge longer for her, like a working edge longer than anything else that she has. Love this thing. We've got a couple of mini grips if we look at both of our collections. Okay, one that you must get if you do not have it. Spyderco K390 from Seki City, Japan. If you do not have this in your rotation, I will be contacting your mom. Uh, this is absolutely necessary, guys. Spyderco K390 in, whether you get it in the Delica, the Endura, the Indela, the Dragonfly 2, doesn't fucking matter. Get one. This steel, Bowler K390, is the best steel ever. It is everything that you want. It will patina a little bit, but that shouldn't bother you if you're a big boy. Just look at this. Look at how cool this thing is. Little Ulton bead there from Urban Carvers. I love this thing. Absolutely adore it. Edge retention is out of this world on that K390. Next we have the TRM Neutron 2 in 20 CV. Come on. Please focus. Thank you. Okay, so this is one that I tested and reviewed on the channel as well. My first go around with this model and this company was pretty horrific. The knife that I got the first time around was a dumpster fire. I have a video completely crapping on that. If you are making knives in the States and charging $200 plus for a knife, it better be coming to me perfect. End of story. The first one was garbage. I did contact them like a year and a half later, and I said I would like to revisit this if you have made any upgrades and if you have tightened up your quality control. Uh, they sent this to me for testing. It is absolutely flawless, arrived perfect. The improvements are great. Really like what TRM is doing now. They had some hiccups with fit and finish and um, they just had some hiccups for a while and now they have come out better and stronger than ever. And this is a knife now that I will always have and I recommend to everybody. This one has been beaten up and I absolutely adore it. Also, the 20 CV that they're pumping out is the best 20 CV that I have used. Along with, um, like you can get a, you can get a uh, Hogue knife and 20 CV and have a pretty good time with it as well if you get a good one, but the, the TRM 20 CV seems to be more consistent with their quality of heat treat. 
But let's talk about Hogue real quick because this is another one that I've tested. The Hogue Mini RSK Ritter in 20 CV. Absolutely love this knife. I have tested multiple versions of this. They're all fantastic. Edge retention is really good for me. I know that Gerald seems like he had a little bit of a tough time with it, possibly. Um, and people will listen to one person and parrot that for eternity. Uh, I have had a completely different approach. I have had a great experience with the 20CV coming from Hogue. I really like this model. I think it's one of the best EDC models ever made. And it has a ton going for it, uh, above and beyond the mini grip. And we always compare these because we know that Doug Ritter was making like a mini grip esque deal over with Benchmade for a while. Then he switched to Hogue. So people compare these models a lot, especially the the drop point model of this in comparison to that. I have made plenty of videos on why the Ritter is just better than the mini grip and a better investment and a better price. Okay, we got some Sebenzas coming up to kind of finish this video here. So this is my Chris Reeves Small Sebenza 31 in S45 VN Blade Steel. This is one that I have tons of videos on. I really beat the shit out of this. I used it as a pry bar and a scraper. People thought I was absolutely insane, but it did get a lot of views on the channel, motherfuckers. <laughs> Yeah, there are tons of videos of me scraping and prying and drilling with this thing and cutting roots out of the garden with it. It has a really nice edge now that I did. I gave it a little bit of TLC after that, so it's got a nice freehand edge on there. But um, just a knife that I have been through a lot with. This one I took the clip off of because if you watch the videos, my clip was faulty and it would ride down onto the lock bar and every time I gripped the knife, it would like click over onto the lock bar and it was driving me nuts. Absolutely bonkers. And instead of sending it in because I don't care, I just put my filler tab in there instead and it's fine now. Um, yeah, this one has been through some shit. But tons of videos on this one if you want to see it beat up. Uh, we also have a Chris Reeves Small Sebenza 31 in S45VN Blade Steel that has a, like, polished finish and double lug. So here's another one. Just a little bit of a different finish there. You can see those really clean grind lines. It's not stonewashed like the other one. Obviously used... There is no pocket jewelry in this household. Come on, focus. Absolutely stunning workhorse of a knife. And then the elusive, the rare. Does it even exist? Might, you might be hallucinating. The Chris Reeve Small Sebenza 21 in S35 VN Blade Steel. I have had this for years. Years. There's not even like any bead blast or sand blast texturing on those scales anymore. It's literally just like snail trails. But look at how gorgeous that is. Huge fat bevel on there that I put on. It performs way better with a fat bevel. This edge is so toothy and crisp being laid back. It's just incredible. I have a really coarse edge on here. I think it's like at most 600 grit. Might even be 325 right now, DMT. I can't, I can't recall. Uh, it's no higher than 600 though. This is just, I laid that motherfucker back and I just... Wanted it toothy. Really beautiful knife. I've said this before in other videos, but Chris Reeve Knives will be making Magna Cut 21 blades coming up this year. So you can still use your Sebenza 21 and get a blade replacement. You can get a Magna Cut blade for your 21 so don't safe queen it if you don't want to you're allowed to use it and you can get it um a reblade that's coming up this year uh tim told me that himself 
on the phone. So, absolutely love this one. I've had this for many, many years. It was my grail knife. And I have just beaten the crap out of it. A grail knife to me is like a knife, like a one and done knife that you just need and you will never want anything more than that realm. And that's exactly what this was for me. You know, um, the, the Sebenza model itself, I, when I got into this hobby, um, this passion, if you will, I was like, okay, I'm not going to get out of fucking control with it. And if I pick a grail knife, it's going to actually be a grail knife. People say that they got their grail knife and then they have 10 other grail knives on their list. And I'm like, well, then it doesn't that defeat the purpose. Like, isn't the grail knife the like one and only holy that you need? Like the, the holy sacrifice that should make your heart content. I feel like we have kind of lost what grail knife means. And maybe it's just changed and I'm old school, but... I feel like if you choose a grail knife every month, you may or may not have a spending problem. <laughs> so the, the, the Sebenza model for me was my grail knife. I said, I'll never want anything more than this really if I get it. And I did, and I really have not wanted anything more in terms of folders. I don't know if you noticed, but... Um, like, in terms of higher-end folders, I do not have anything that um, exceeds the Sebenza. I do not have any custom folders. I do not have anything, um, higher in price, really. I don't have anything to this, to these tolerances, because I think you would start getting into custom folders, and number one, that's expensive, but number two, like I said, I have not wanted anything more. Once I got my hands on the Sebenza, I really didn't want anything more from a knife. This is the perfect knife for me. This this was and is my grail knife. Yes, I have a small and cozy, but that doesn't count. It's not really comparable to the Sebenza, and that also was a like a gift to me. And um, it's it's a great knife, but it's not. It wasn't ever like my grail knife, and it's not perfect. I really don't like the the finger cutouts on the Incosi. I really don't like those finger cutouts. I hate when knives tell me where to put my fingers. It works for me in my small hands, but I just prefer the feeling of a Sebenza way more. I really like the lack of ergonomics on the Sebenza. So, um, this was my grail knife. It, you know, probably always will be. I don't want anything more from this. Do I have multiples? Yes. I got the 31 to test and compare to the 21, especially because they don't make the 21 anymore. And I have two of them because um, uh, this one had some interesting quirks that I wanted to see if they would flow into a different um, type of Sebenza. I just, like, I don't, I don't want to make a video on one knife and be like, every knife is going to be like this. So I, I do have this one that I compared and yeah. You guys know the deal. Anyway, that's the whole collection, though. Um, I'm pretty sure. I don't think I have anything else. Yeah. Those are all the knives currently. We're on 40 minutes. Holy smokes. I gotta go, guys. Um, I hope that you enjoyed that video. I think that, you know, I'm coming into the new year, we're gonna try to just keep trucking. My entire life has fallen apart. I am still staying strong and still keeping my head above water and just trying to make the best of it. And, um, you know, making, making knife videos does make me really happy. I'll, I do put other content on the channel, but the knife videos really do make me happy and you guys like them. And I think this is a great way to enter the new year. We have stuff to test. Um, going to keep pumping out the knife content. Yeah. Life is, life is good. Even though it's hard, it's damn good. I am grateful for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. We need to go use your shit knife. <laughs> I don't have any. They're all safe queens. What am I going to do? They're all pocket jewelry. Okay. Go use your shit. Go sharpen your knives. I will see you on the next video. I love you all very, very much.
take care. Erica with Not Your Average EDC, signing out.